Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. So today, this is a fundamental tutorial in which we are going to talk about the field in general and the transfer attribute. Although I think very few people will actually watch this tutorial, especially as many other people, I believe, have already covered this kind of topic. But I think it's also very important to talk about these kind of concepts in a different way. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender, and here is a very simple setup of a geometry node tree. I have shown similar setup in many, many other tutorials, for example, geometry proximities and the capturing attribute. But I think this setup is the most basic, but also very illustrative or demonstrative example that we can have talking about the fields in general. So uh, we started with a cube. On one side, I'm subdivide this cube, so it's generates more kind of points or cuts without changing the shape of cube. On the other hand, I'm, I'm making a subdivision surface, so making it a, a cubic sphere, and I take two set position. So each one has a different kind of offset. Set position nodes generally means that you set the vertices location of your object. So if you add a noise into the position or offset, then you are essentially changing this kind of geometry, just like how you do in the edit mode. Okay, sort of idea. When you're working with this kind of a set of position nodes, uh, there is an automatic linkage for the position attribute into this kind of position socket, so that you do not need to actually add this node into this socket all the time you are using this set of position. Uh, but uh, if you're doing any kind of math function, for example, vector rotate or other things, then you definitely need to put this position back in. Otherwise, without this position linkage, then everything will be crushed into a single point, which is at origin. Okay, So you need to put the position back in so that you can actually rotate your object and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, here, this position attribute, as I have actually explained many, many times, that this node does not contain any information or any data. And here is a very interesting moment when I'm using a single position node to link into two set position. And here's what we can actually see. So now we have a cube. So this position is outputting a cube information. Uh, but uh, if I switch to another geometry, it outputs a spherical information. And if I join this geometry, I can see both cube and both sphere at the same time and both of them are defined by this single position attribute node. So how is that possible for a single position node to output different information so that different geometry end up having a different um, shape in this case? The reason is that the position attribute node or all this kind of attribute node never contains data by their own. All this kind of data is actually retrieved from this kind of green data block of geometry. This is also why if you're taking a view to look at all this kind of data, you do not only need to plug these values, but also you need to plug a geometry. In my capture attribute tutorial, I will discuss a case in which we're using the points, a uh, mesh to points nodes, that we convert a mesh to something else. In such a kind of case, we lose the normal information so that we cannot really instance on face with the correct orientation and so on and so forth. In such a case, we must not use the geometry for all the time points if this point does not carry a normal attribute. In such kind of case, we need to capture the attribute in a specific time point so that all this kind of value can be used in the future. So in this case, if I capture the position, so this position may be used in the future if we there is anything happens uh, because this position has been freezed at this specific geometry and for the usage in the future. So with all the information we know so far, I would like to make a kind of very simple animation. I basically just want this cube to be transformed into this cubic sphere, knowing that both geometry, although they look very different, but that they actually are just a cube being subdivided differently. Okay. So ideally speaking, they should be transformed to each other without any issue. But uh, the question is, we are already putting the positions into different sockets. One is transforming a cube, the other is transforming a sphere, and we have no success. So it's very possible that you think, hey, let's just capture attribute into the, in this geometry 
so that we have a geom uh, spherical position data and then we can plug this pos spherical position data into this kind of cube and somehow it should actually work but our cube disappears and our sphere stay the same and if I disable this joint geometry we can see nothing because there is no cube being presented anywhere so what's wrong with this setup as being mentioned previously that this kind of node does not carry any values what really carries the values is actually this kind of geometry and when we capture an attribute within this kind of geometry this position value is still stayed within this geometry not elsewhere and it does not directly being transferred to another geometry okay so this linkage still has no values and that's why we lose our cube because everything has been crushed into these single vertices if you do not put anything if you look at the viewer uh, and you can actually observe the fact that that's, uh, this value is giving the data of 0000, zero, zero, zero. so let's go to viewers and you can see this is what we are getting okay so how are we gonna to transfer uh, the value from this geometry to the other place and this is the today's topic in which we're talking about the usage of this transfer attribute transfer attribute node is a very complex node there are so many use cases so it's very difficult to really cover everything in just a single fundamental tutorial however in this particular case we do see a necessity to have this node so that we can actually transfer information from one geometry to the other so this transfer attribute node automatically contains a internal capture attribute function so that that's why we're having this target I do not really like all this kind of nomenclature but it's also reasonable why they call this as a target so now we are actually working with this kind of cube geometry but we would like to get the attribute from elsewhere that's why we call this target so in this case the target will actually be our cubic sphere because that's where we get our position attribute from the position is a vector so we plot that to a vector and it's um, it's basically self-explanatory if you're looking at these kind of different options but in this case I would just plug this attribute to position and immediately you can see that our cube has been turned into a cubic sphere as and we can actually offset this location and we can confirm oh this is the cube that we work with but now it looks like a cubic sphere here we have merged the cube and the cubic sphere into together so I do no longer need all this kind of drawing geometry and the set of position just to look at this set of position that we have and to make a little bit more more graph like let's take a mix RGB node which is similar to kind of mix vector in this case and let's plug the position to the color so now we have this kind of position out of the different values one finally leads to this geometry so the original cube geometry the other position actually comes from this sphere geometry okay and now if I mix play with the factor of this mix RGB and you can see this cube has been transformed into a sphere there are many different modes of this transfer attributes um, you can play around by yourself but most frequently I'm using this index mode because it makes it more predictable about what you're looking at uh, I really like this kind of function because you can see all this kind of index this index mode works in this particular case because all of them actually comes from a single geometry and they are being divided at the same level so that they have the same amount of vertices from point to point that's why you can actually play very smoothly there are definitely cases in which we're using the nearest or nearest face interpolated but it's kind of very rare so we will talk about them in real life practice but most frequently I'm using this index because it's more predictable okay uh, and here we can play this factor to animate these things uh, it also means that we can plug in a field inside 
So let's take a directional fourth preset that I have. You can download that for free from the from the link in the description. Uh, let's plot this fourth into factor. Uh, right now, you do not really see anything significant, but let's add an empty. So this is really just an empty object, and by playing around this empty object, since it's called a directional fourth, you can see a directional transition from the cube into a sphere. So this is already a very interesting part when you're making more graph and you can definitely make it more complex uh, depends on what you're actually doing. So this is a very basic tutorial talking about the fields and transfer attribute nodes. I also touched a little bit about the capture attribute again. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.